Welcome, my name is Rolf. You may be, when you're on Polmonx, you know me as uh, Langs. It's uh, very difficult on Polmonx not to see me. And I want to talk about Emacs as a Perl ID. Oh, for, sorry. Once again, my name is Rolf. And uh, I want to talk about Emacs as a Perl ID. And if you're on Polmonx, you know me. And, uh, oh, what happened? So, years ago, I've been, uh, I had a new client, and uh, it was my first day, and they told me, yeah, well, you have to use Notepad as an editor, because they don't have nices anymore for ultra-edit. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about Notepad, not Notepad++, to be sure. The, and they said, uh, we, had a, we, don't, we have a budget for you, but we don't have a budget for licenses. I said, it's no problem, I will install Emacs. It's, uh, it's, I can unzip it from my, my, my zip drive, and it works out of the box. And they told me, but what is that, an editor? But I just told you we have no budget for licenses. Well, Emacs is for free. And I want to make clear, this is not a fanboy talk. If you are happy with any other editor, especially Vim, please, no flames. <laughs> uh, uh, this talk is intended primarily for people who use Emacs and want to survive using Emacs. So, Emacs is per se not an IDE. Emacs is 40 years old. You have to imagine. It's an IDE construction set. It's extremely flexible. But bigger setups are hard to maintain. Many, plenty of modules are uh, available called ELS packages, and um, it's like CPAN. You have a um, universe of possibilities, but far too many to be easily handled. So I want to share with you my experience with Emacs 24, the newest one, in three phases. I want to show you what's offered right of the box. I want to uh, show some extensions which pay off right, right away and a vision how to go on further. So the definition, let me say, what is an IDE? It's, it's very vague and I don't want to get into this discussion. Uh, I don't have a simple answer. It's, uh, I try to discuss it on Promons and everybody has another view of it. He has another use case where his IDE has to work. Um, you will certainly disagree if this talk is about all the features you wanted to see, but it's a start. So let me start with things which are built in an Emacs right away. And I will rush through all these demonstrations because I have plenty of slides of demonstrations. You can, uh, later on you can have the PDF and you can go little by little if something is interesting for you. There is one feature which is called dynamic abbreviation, which means if you have a name which already happened in your, in your source, you can expand it. Let's say you have a variable called blah underscore and it starts. You type dynamic abbreviation, then it will take the, the last blah which happened before the text. Then it takes the next blah which happened afterwards. And then it will uh, look for other blah name variables started with blah which happened in any other buffer, which is in a Perl context. This doesn't work only for variables, it works for any kind of words. Then, key binding emulations. If you're working with Emacs, you have to keep in mind it's 40 years old. So, the key bindings of Emacs are, were made before most key bindings you're used to in your operating system or other tools were standardized. But, you can change them easily. You have uh, set up, it's just one click in the menu and you have common user ex uh, access so you can use copy, paste and all this stuff and I also uh, made control A work like it's used to be and you also have every mood if you're, if you're using the I or to be precise if you're using Vim which is a different editor you can have um, the setup so you can use it. So. Um, somehow a part of the presentation is missing. Can, can, okay, so you can see here that I'm trying to make a substitute. Substitution. 
And uh, this is the VI command. I just uh, activated every mood. And I'm uh, substituting the old variable name with a new variable name, and it works. So I've talked, I'm not a VI user. You won't see a VI presentation now. I've, uh, I've asked, asked several VI users to, to, to check Emacs in every mood, and they said it's pretty good. So next. Um, CPL mood is one of two moods which are available for Perl, and it's now bundled with Emacs, and it's far better, better than the normal Perl mood. It has a lot of features, plenty of features. It has auto indentation, an awesome highlighting, the best highlighting I've seen so far. It has uh, syntax parsing in the uh, uh, built-in compilation support. Uh, let me rush through some of the features. Um, for example, you can have tooltips. If you're a beginner and you don't understand what an if is, like here, and you go over it with a cursor, you will see an explanation what if does. Next. I just activated it, but it is uh, like a tooltip. Then, you have electric closing parentheses. You can, uh, with this command, I've included all the examples how to activate it in CPL mood. But I have to say, you don't need to program it in Lisp. You can also go through the menus and activate it in customization. And you say, um, I want to have uh, parents included automatically. So you make an uh, opening parenthesis, you got, get the closing one. You make the next if, you get the closing one. You make the opening parenthesis, you get the closing one, and so on. And it helps you. And it, it jumps to the next line. Then um, we, c we can't adjust the beamer, do we? Because the bottom line is missing. OK, forget it. Um, you can see it on the video. The video will be good. <laughs> so uh, you can have uh, auto insert of, uh, you can have, an, I activated it, but if I make a semicolon, I want to have a return right away. And I activate it, then I, then I have, a, when I want to make a command, it jumps back to the last line again, and then I make the command. And you see, uh, I did the system, uh, so let me go back. I did the semicolon, and it, it uh, just indented automatically the print to the right uh, column, and it jumped to the next line. Then um, there are a lot of do what I mean bindings to keywords, uh, to, uh, to shortcuts, which means you're using a shortcut in different contexts, and it does what you want. So for example, if I select multiple lines, and uh, Emacs knows there's a selection, and I use the comment command, it will comment the region. Same, it will uncomment the region again after I, I use it again. So I can select, comment, uncomment the region. With the same command, I can jump to the comment row. So I can define that I want to have my comments always on row 40 or 60, and it jumps to the right row. And uh, I can, uh, if I want to have the comment on another row, the first line, I define I want to have it on this row, 40 for example, and then it adjusts every other following line to the same row. Then uh, toggling postfix and prefix, that's a typical Perl feature. You have postfix command and prefix commands in Perl. You can have the if before or after, Larry can tell, he embedded. And uh, you put your cursor on the if, and you use a special command, and it, uh, it swaps around. You put the cursor on the if again, you use a control C, control T, and it swaps back. It's very handy if you start with a postfix command, and you say later, oh, I need more lines. I don't want to do a do or something like this. You just use this, and then you continue. Then uh, regex beautifying. Um, Ilya was so nice, he also implemented a regex parser inside of CPL mood. So you can go in the inside of a regex and you say, oh, I wanted to have an X uh, toggle. So you go and you say uh, regex beautify and the regex is beautified and you have automatically an X. Um, I'm not making a perk class now and explaining what, it, what the X does, okay? So, we are still in the out-of-the-box features, and I'm good in time. Too fast so far? Good. So, regional undo. This is a feature which doesn't come with CPL, but it's a, it's a killer feature in Emacs. Let's change $i to $x. 
So far, so good. But then I decided, OK, I've changed the code, but I want to change it back just in the region I selected. If you do an undo and a region is enabled, I said do what I mean, just the region is undone. It has an undo uh, cache and it knows in which region it happened, in which lines it happened, and just the region, no matter how many lines you included before and afterwards, it will only undo at this point. If you're not using heavily um, uh, revision control systems, you're very glad that you do, you do have this feature. So what next? Uh, automatic syntax check. This is called FlyMake. Um, people told me FlyCheck is better. I haven't tested it now. But if you activate FlyMake, um, if you know Commodore Editor, it has it right out of, uh, out of the box activated. It runs in the background Perl minus C. After one, two seconds, if you don't type, if you are idle, it just runs in the background continuously Perl minus C with the code you're typing. So this code has, a, has a, some errors. I don't know if you can spot it. But let's say we just type it, then we type, uh, I just type one space, and then it runs uh, FlyMag mode in the background, and it shows me there's a compilation error, here's a compilation error, here's a compilation error. This one, a my is missing. I, ch I uh, change it. Oh. Oh, there's one slide missing. I change the my, and then these errors still last. Here, I have a typo. I typed L instead of 1. And here, I have in the begin block a warning, which means I have a comp compile time error. Of course, runtime errors, catching runtime errors, it's different. You have to compile. I mean, you have to run. That's a very handy feature at the beginning. You said, well, it's nice. I don't know if I need it. But after I activate it, I don't want to miss it again. Because it, it is so much faster if you, you always make errors, and you're so much faster if you get an instant feedback that you have, have made an error. So still out of the box features. You have a debugger integration, which comes out of the box with Emacs. It displaces the source and the debugger in two panes, positioned. And while we're running the debugger, it's running in another window. Well, in, in Emacs, because it's so old, frames and windows are just opposite of what you think if we're doing HTML. So a window is what you call a frame in HTML, and a frame is a window. But anyway, uh, display, display source and debugger in two windows. And while you run, let's, say, let's activate now in the line which is missing downstairs, there's uh, activation of this debugger. I run it. Downstairs, you pull the debugger, and you have a one panel. You have the debugger. You can include commands. A single step, a single step to this line. I set a breakpoint, and you see here it's highlighted where you are in the in the code. You see the live code you're debugging at the moment, and I run it, and I make continue, and it shows me the output one, two, three. Just and now I'm at this line. Handy if you use the debugger. There are better debugger integrations, but this one comes out of the box. Okay, now supplementary modules. I've chosen, there is a wide variety of possibilities to extend the Perl support in Emacs. Uh, I've just chosen some which are very effective and they don't, you will not obliged to uh, script any elisp for it, any lisp. So it works, out of, it works, you install it, it works out of the box and it's very good. First thing I want to show you is Yas snippet. Yas snippet, yet another snippet, because Emacs is 40 years old, you have plenty of snippets, uh, template extension, which is a text template with some intelligence you can expand. If you have code blocks, you want to expand automatically. For example, TextMate um, was a Macintosh editor which started with a snippet and the format is standardized. Most editors now support it. And uh, let's say we type while, we then we have a character, a short key, we activate it. In my case, it's tap, I tap, and I get it expanded. I get uh, all the, um, I get the parents auto automatically expanded and I have tap stops. So it stops, the first stop is here, I can integrate the, the condition, then I'm, and then I'm uh, tap, and then I'm in the next tap stop. Okay, let's go on. 
what when we want to have, uh, we can have placeholders. That means in the top stop, you can already integrate something which is shown. You can leave it like this, or you can change it. So you get to have what is uh, supposed to be inserted here. So we need a function name, we need variables. So I uh, make a function name, I type my variables. Oh, I have a type of my function name. I make shift top and I correct it. So I can still navigate all these top stops. And then I go into the body and then I type something in the body and the next tab I'm outside. So uh, the, the, the snippet is out. So I can have multiple snippets with the same um, keyword which triggers it. I can have if and I can uh, decide whether I have different ifs, maybe I want to have a postfix if and then I get a menu and he asks me which if do you want to have. Choose this one. Then I can have um, values, predefined values to um, to choose. If you use moves and you have an has construct, and you say, oh, okay, I call it now sex appeal, and is this sex appeal read only, read write, or bear? And I can define a pre-selection box of all the possibilities. I think for beginners it's very handy, and I just choose one, and then it's read only. Good for your sex appeal. Now, still too fast? No? no? Good. Boring? Okay. I have to look into the audience. Um, now, creating your own snippets is simple. It's just a text template. You use uh, variables to, um, to indicate where your top stops are. And you can also run dynamic code. You can run Perl code inside of your snippets. You can run Lisp code. You can run any kind of code. Normally, it's Ruby in the TextMate world, but you can extend it however you want. This is a snippet I wrote myself to just to show the, the possibilities you have when you're creating your own snippets. This, where, this is um, an example for uh, placeholders. This is the first top stop is dollar one. The next top stop is dollar two. The third top stop is dollar three. And this is the last top stop is dollar dollar zero. And these are mirrors. What does mirror mean? Well, I will. I want to create a uh, subroutine with pot, and it means it it does automatically the pot on top of it. And while I type the the name of the subroutine, it's automatically integrated in the pot. And while I type the variables, I, I, I'm expecting it's automatically integrated in the in. And while I type the variables which come out, it's uh, automatically integrated in the pod. And then I can write some code. I want to say, this is just the handiest example I came up with. Uh, I'm not sure I would use this because I rather prefer to don't repeat myself and have something which automatically creates the pod, then come to my talk tomorrow. And, uh, <laughs> And good in time. Autocomplete. What does autocomplete mean? I've shown you now different measures, different possibilities to complete. You have abbreviation, you have snippets, there are far more possibilities to complete something just in context. Autocomplete EL is a module which helps you to choose which uh, kind of completion do I want to have. It shows an expansion while typing. It shows a select box of possibilities. It integrates different completion sources. YAS snippets is, is uh, integrated per default. The abbreviation, uh, the dynamic abbreviation, are expanded by default. And you yeah, can plug in more backends. Let's have a demo. I have to say, I've, I've not really shown you a live demo because two years ago at the Jump Pro workshop, I tried to make a live demo with the Emacs and. Um, it was some kind of devastating because I'm switching be between different moods. So I, I rather prefer to have the screenshots integrated in the PDF, and you can go on slowly, and it works somehow. So you see, I've activated uh, autocomplete. If we could see, oh no, we can't see downside. Uh, the autocomplete is now activated, 
and uh, Yasnip it is activated, and now I see I've written blah like before, and it shows me, oh, you want to have anti uh, before, the one afterwards, or the one before, and you can select. And then you get, uh, you already see what's happening, it's uh, while typing. So autocomplete can do much more. It can detect, it can have rules, results, what kind of completion do you want? For example, if you type a dollar, it's more or less obvious that you, ex you want to expand a variable. If you use use or require, it's more than obvious that you want to expand uh, a module. So you want to have a module name integrated. So you can have uh, parsing rules, and the completion source is then um, um, map to the parsing rule and you can expand, oh I, want, I only want to expand my f function name or I want to expand a file path or I want to expa expand a variable. Um, there is a module which is a very good demonstration on YouTube and um, animated GIF called PLSense. Uh, I haven't tried it out yet but um, I've heard of Rani uses it, he says it's excellent, Rani Uber. And I uh, just wanted to show you how, uh, which uses this omni-completion, omni-completion of autocomplete. And just to show you how such an autocomplete reset could look like, you just defined, well, this is um, in Lisp. Okay, who of you likes Lisp? Who hates it? Who doesn't like it? Okay. I have a pre-selection of audience. <laughs> anyway, this is a reset which shows how to uh, make a, a, um, a completion only for modules. I have here, um, it's taken out of PL sense. It says a prefix, a prefix can, uh, it has a regex, it's a regex syntax, the, the old regex syntax before Perl conquered the market where well, you have to, uh, you have strings and you have to escape the parentheses. And it says either use or require before and some characters afterwards. And uh, it will show in the completion menu as, uh, as with a symbol P, so you see what kind of completion I want to do. And then it, it, uh, it's, uh, it gets uh, the source from somewhere, it does the caching of all the modules possible. Okay, there's more to do. When you, you know, when you talk about people, what do you think is an IDE? They just come with an image. They want to have something like this. This is what most people identify with an IDE because most people think visually. They want to have different panes with different functions and they use the mouse and can uh, jump out of it. Um, just uh, ECB is called Emacs Code Browser. Browser. Sorry, I'm German, sometimes I'm confusing when talking English. Browser, and um, it uh, comes out of the box with different layouts, and you can define your own layouts. You want to have several panels with several, several uh, inserts, so you can have this panel, it shows all the functions we have. I just, just to demonstrate that you can have different theme, uh, themes, I activate another theme to show that you can have other, other color codes in Emacs. You can have a file view of all the files in your project. You can have, um, I don't know, different panels. It's listed oh, here. Project browser, uh, all subroutines, the pod tree, the directory view, the history view. Emacs code browser is uh, language agnostic. It just gets the, the, the um, information it needs from CPL mode, and it works. And downside, you have a compilation window which pops uh, up and down if you're writing something. And one big problem beside the short keys in Emacs, uh, which really haunted me for the first 10 years, um, was uh, the window management in Emacs. Because you're always popping up new windows, window, new windows, and windows. And until I found uh, Win Undo, Winner Undo, and unfortunately, it doesn't work with. Uh, um, ECB, but I can make it work so I can g make an undo of all the windows and the, which are popping up and splitting and so on. In this case, I just uh, did uh, Control X3, which means split vertically. Control X2 is split 
uh, horizontally or the other way around and um, it works in the inside of ECB without changing the rest of the layout so this stays fixed this is very handy and you can do your undos and just this is changing with the standard uh, Emacs features uh, Emacs code browser comes with a lot of more features I didn't have the time to explore them all of them but I have the experience when I use Emacs people say oh that's a weird thing when I activate ECB they say well can you show me how to use this uh, I'm starting to get interested in Emacs so people think visually so what else um, you another module I chose and there are much more modules I just had to take a selection for half an hour is the regex tool which is just 60 lines or 100 lines of lisp it's very very tiny and very effective it just pops up a new window and you have three panels you have the text you want to investigate it comes uh, per standard with a text and it shows the result of your regex and you're inserting your regex now I try the regex T followed by three characters it will match this it will match text and will match match what what the fuck no I didn't want to match the uh, the empty space so I changed my regex and this match doesn't happen anymore you see I uh, changed the uh, screenshot to have a mouse integrated so you can see which point I mean and um, you can choose yeah, it supports out of the box em uh, Emacs and Perl so you can uh, uh, I've activated it's an Emacs regex you can tell because in Emacs you have to escape the parentheses so the brackets and uh, I'm always confused in English brackets parentheses what is what but anyway the, uh, the round ones so in Emacs you have to escape them and because in Emacs well in, in GNU Emacs uh, all these is, uh, regexes are strings you have to double escape them so you have in Emacs list, it's, I hate it you have slasheritis so you're, you're writing a regex and you need I don't know four or six reg, uh, slashes to write a regex and um, you, can, you can only tell if it's, it's an odd number of, of uh, slashes something is wrong the only good thing about it but yeah so one of my projects one of my 100 or 200 projects I have and I'm talking about is to make a converter from Perl regex to Lisp regex so you can uh, customize Emacs so my vision why am I giving this talk well my first goal there are different phases, different stages I wanted. My first goal was I wanted to have a, a better environment for myself. I'm using Emacs since university. I won't change easily to another editor because there's always something missing I got used to. It's the same with the VI users. That's why I showed every mood. You don't miss it anymore. And no VI users here. <laughs> so actually, I wanted to eat my old dog food. I wanted to have a better environment for myself. The next step, the next vision I have is some of you are Perl users, uh, Emacs users here, and Perl users I hope so too. And maybe I can group some of you to extend, um, to work together to extend the, the Perl behavior, the Perl features in, uh, in Emacs. Then the third thing was I want to have a reference model for other IDE users. I started a discussion I think six years ago on Perl monks and I started to uh, they could vote what is your definition what exactly is your definition of IDE and they could vote and so uh, I didn't have but now we have a reference model where this feature this feature this feature I need and then we could even have a pool of editor agnostic Perl solutions what I showed you snippets and auto completions are so generic we could define them and could work in different browsers, uh, editors. So after the Perl bundle, let's say we have an Emacs Perl bundle. It has to be, well, that's good for me. It's, it's multi-platform. I mean, I might have to work on Windows, unfortunately, but that's my client. It's portable on a stick. It's begin, it should be beginner friendly. That's uh, the things I expect from an Emacs Perl bundle. 
provide the e-bundle. It should be extendable and it should have uh, the visual user interface like other IDs like Commodore. That's why I showed you Emix code browser. And maybe nice to have, CPL mode is about three or four thousand lines of Lisp code. And I don't think that Ilya is very active anymore. Did you get any contact with him? Not yet. So it's not clear who's maintaining it. And maybe one big thing that Emacs needs is testing. We could write test, uh, test code in, in Perl or so. That's the idea for the Perl bundle. For the Perl IDE framework, which is generic, if we use, well, it's obvious. The Perl community will not only support Emacs, only one platform. There are twice as many VI or Vim users than Emacs users. But the more addresses we could support, the better. And we could uh, make a gen generic creation of snippets and completion rules which work in different browsers, in different editors. If I say browser, editor. So let's make a, uh, an example. I'm over time. I'm just needing two minutes, then I'm ready, OK? Um, let's say we have a, a namespace called um, we have a project called Moose and we just define a pod called IDE, Moose IDE or Modulicious IDE. We could embed snippets in pod and hooking them into your editor. Let's say we say make a begin block, an end block of your pod, we integrate the snippet. So you have different projects which need different snippets and the author of the project, which is a VI user, could just define the snippets and the snippet is, is uh, included in different editors. Because pod allows extra format and just, this would be ignored by normal pod and just the formatter which uses which finds snippets would expand it and then we could you import it in different editors. So we could uh, improve the IDE uh, experience. And the other one, we could, uh, similarly, we could have rules. I don't know why the slide disappeared. Well, I hope this is, I gave you several talks, but this is Premiere. This first time I slept the night before. <laughs> you can tell by the, by, the, by the speed. So that's it. We are over time. If you want to go for, for meal, go for meal. If you have questions. I'm open. Yep. Well, you have this uh, yas yeah, snippet comes. Uh, well, snippets come from TextMate. Yes, this TextMate snippet format. You could. Re No, it's a vision, it's a vision. But uh, I can tell you, uh, you have for Yasna, but you have an import. The, the, the problem is up 99% similar, but you have to use uh, Elist inside of Yasna, but if you have the fancy things, and it imports uh, TextMate snippets. And you have this feature, I saw TextMate snippets for VI. I, Commodore has a similar feature. I'm pretty sure the other editors do it too. The problem when we are talking about IDEs, I don't have the lifespan to test all IDEs before giving a talk. It would take me 100 hours at the same time you have new IDEs. I don't know how they are called nowadays. Atom or uh, what was the one with the multi-replaces? Uh, Sublime and all this. But the good things about the open source gorillas like Vim and Emacs is they have a co-evolution, they steal from each other and they constantly steal the good ideas from the other IDEs. So if you're willing to, to put some effort in the configuration, you can have all these features too. And the good thing about Emacs like the I, it also works in the terminal. So you have terminal session, uh, secure shell session, through secure session, you can still use Emacs with all the features I've shown you. All the features work in the terminal too. Other questions? Okay, go for food. Yes.